Greetings. Blessings and peace from us to you. You know, it's so good to be here in Jesus' name. And we want to say thanks again for the opportunity in allowing us to be with you at this time. You know, we want to continue looking at the ant. We are learning and we have learned so much from the ant. I look at them, I pay attention to them. And I like the way they work. They work together as a team. They don't have a supervisor. They don't have a foreman, but they know what they are about. We want to challenge this nation. Let's work together as one. Too long we've been divided. And you notice as long as we're divided, we're not accomplishing anything much. And so from this set, we want to challenge this entire nation and around the world. Let us work together as one. You know, we have a motto together, we achieve the extraordinary. And so we throw this challenge to you. Let's put aside the vision. Let's put aside, we feel that we can make it all together by ourselves. And let us work together as a team and we will see how much we will accomplish. We want to encourage you to stay with us. This is Choices and God bless you. And may he continue to bless beautiful Guyana. Thank you. Thank you. You know, last week we, we started to look at the whole subject of, of preparedness. And a key word that came out of, of, of the session we had last week was that of awareness. And uh, we kept um, massaging the whole concept of awareness even as we live this life, um, we have to be aware of our surroundings. We have to be aware of what is happening. We have to we have to keep our ears in tune to what is going on, and we have to make sure that we do research because we live in a time now where information is is flowing. From all angles, and some of the information there that we receive, the information is polluted. And if one is not conscious, you could find that you're consuming polluted information, which means you yourself will become polluted at some point in time. And so we talked about the the, the ant and the, the the behavior. One of the things you find that people do now. As you look around, the people are more concerned with the now. Um, but it is important that we think future. Um, it's important that we think generational. And that's how the ant, the, the ant operated. They, 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 they thought future. As, as you said, Reverend Singh, um, they look to what might be some of the, the problems that might be forthcoming and try to save, to put up for, uh, for a rainy day or a harsh time. And so, um, and that kind of thing, the collaboration we talked about, working together, you mentioned division, Reverend Singh, and um, you know anything that is divided will not stand. And so it is important also that collaboration be central to, to what we do if we're going to survive as a community, as a family, as a community, and as a nation. So the ant offers um, good, good counsel, if you could say that, uh, in terms of the behavior. Um, the message is clear how one ought to live and how one ought to conduct his or, or herself um, if they're going to be effective. Um, you know, it's, 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 a, good, it's a good example um, that we should look at. I often wonder Solomon, who is king, or who is king, pointed to a natural scenario. I am not sure whether, given who Solomon was, there would have been ants in the palace. Um, because <laughs> cleanliness and the fact that he was a man of excellence, but he shifted the focus from what was happening there to the natural environment and to show us that God has given all of us the opportunity to look 
in the environment. You know, Dr. Nutsin, you talk about awareness. And sometimes we are tempted to complain. We don't have this, we can't do this, and we can't do that. Um, but Solomon shift the focus from if we want to say the bright lights and show us that God has given us examples that we can follow. You know, some of the ants, the one especially that we call the Akushi ants, the one that destroys, you know, your vegetation and all that. If you were to dig, you follow the, um, the track and you to dig, those nests, while you might see something on the top soil, but those nests are way down in the soil, a couple of feet down. And when you dig and you examine it, you see that they have, you know, in, in the rice industry, we talk about silos. They got things looking like silos. The way they store their food in different compartments in the orch chamber. And so they are thinking, or the example set there is that they are futuristic. And sometimes as individuals, God blesses us with different things, but we develop um, a mentality where we want to consume everything now and, you know, we don't look to the future. And so the example is really powerful. Um, it teaches us that it is not for just us to just to consume what God has blessed us with now, but we must think about those who will come after us, our generation. How can we put up um, for our offsprings um, or even for the nation? We don't consume all that we have but we think about the years to come. So again, you know, Simon, you know Doc, a beautiful example. Dr. Lee, you're making a very important point there. And the fact that you could have pointed to Solomon. You know, I remember his words. He said, he was very clear. He said, go ye sluggard. He said, you sluggard. Who is a sluggard? You might have it, but you procrastinate. You're holding back. You don't want to take risks. He said, go to the ant and consider it ways. What a lesson, you know? He could have used so many other insects or animals, but he said, go to the ant and consider its ways so that you can be taught, you can be inspired to move from where you are to where you ought to be as it relates to your life, and making preparation for your future. And you know, when we think about the ant, we hear, we hear words like teamwork, commitment, patience, planning, communication chain. These are just some of the characteristics that we see being displayed by the ant who have no leader, but yet they can work together as a team to achieve what they want to achieve. I, I remember the last program, I make reference to the fact that in the abdomen of the ant, the ant has two stomach, one in which he stores food for himself and the other one he stores food for other ants, you know? Because they are planning, they know that sometimes they can be a drought, a shortfall, and we will have to resort to what we have. As humans, Sometimes things running, we would say, that might just say things running. And we get it and we use it up. Not knowing that there is going to come a time when the season will change. And we make no preparation for the future. So indeed, like Solomon said, you know, the sluggard, go to the ant and consider the trees. Thank you so much, brothers for bringing this topic to us today, you know. The thing about life is that we do not only learn from our own experiences, but we learn from the experiences of others. We learn from creation. We learn from our environment. And uh, I like the two components that Dr. Hudson posited earlier, the whole notion of awareness and collaboration. We have to be aware of our surroundings. We have to collaborate with people. You know, we're not an island. But what I want to encourage us today is that as we engage the future, as we look at the example of the ant, 
let us make a concerted effort to follow through. Because uh, many times we, we know the core principle of working together, you know, its importance and all of that. But we have to now make a concerted effort to work together. We have to put in the work. We have to engage the future. And I think of my own life as a young boy in high school, third form, fourth form, you know, I started, as I saw an opportunity in my class and I started selling confectionaries, you know? And for two years, I was able to raise all the money to pay for my CXC. So my parents didn't have that burden. So in essence, what we're saying is that you need to, as you engage the future, put these principles that we are learning every single day in our lives, put it to the test, make, make be an example, and uh, we will see how our lives will change, the, the quality of our lives will be better, and we can be an inspiration, not only for ourselves, our own families, but the people that are around us. You know, I want to shift a bit from um, Solomon's wisdom as he spoke about the ants and use a bit of Guyanese um, Creole wisdom. Um, I am told, you know, growing up, that the Karen Crow, the vulture, doesn't really build a nest. And so when it rains, you hear the Karen Crow croaking or singing. And the Guyanese wisdom or uh, parlance has it that the Karen Crow is singing and saying that when the rain stops, he will build his nest. <laughs> but <laughs> that never happens. And it rains again, he sings, that he never builds a nest. The point is, I mean, the wisdom coming out of that is that the opportunity that we have, opportunities that God would have given to us, it's a time to utilize it, considering the future ahead of us. Um, it's not for here and now, but it is futuristic. So the comparison or the... The wisdom that Solomon uses to describe the work of the ants. Um, he is talking, you know, he's talking here, he's making comparison with the sluggard. It's not that the sluggard may not have been given opportunities. It is not that the sluggard may not have been able to acquire things necessary to build for the future, but it's the mindset, it's the attitude towards what they um towards what he or she might have received. And so um, sometimes it's not so much the amount that we have, but it's our attitude to what God yeah. has blessed us with. And, you know, sometimes you hear people complain, I, you know, I didn't have anything much. I didn't do this. I didn't have that and all <laughs> of that. And then when you look at, the, uh, at their neighbors or somebody on the other side, you see that they have utilized the little that they have in order to prepare and to ensure that the future is secure. So similarly, you know, um, with, with, with salvation and life, um, we have heard the word of God. Um, what have we done with it? Or what have you done with it? And so the little things in life, they matter. You know, Solomon talks of, when we look at that portion of scripture, we see the issue of um, diligence. Uh, and and that, that's a word that is loaded. The ant, um, is is a diligent creature. They, 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 I think you mentioned that they work around the clock. Dr. you talk about you know um, overnight when you wake up, you you might see a bag that is full of stuff um, in the morning. That bag has been reduced significantly in terms right. of what has been taken away, and and that is that is as a result of diligence. And Proverbs ten four, hear what the the Proverbs ten four says: lazy hands. Lazy hands make for poverty, but diligent hands brings wealth. Lazy hands make for poverty, but diligent hands um, bring wealth. The issue of diligence is it brings honor also. You know, it, it is not how much you get right away. It, it's, it's, it's a process, and that's how those, the, those guys operate. They, 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 you know, uh, you know, old people used to say, I grew up um, hearing 
one one does he just build them you know so quietly quietly you know the, the ant is working because it, it brings honor diligence those who work hard that's a mark of wisdom i i you know people want to have things they want possessions and stuff but they don't want to work so lazy hands will not cause you to to, to come out of poverty diligence requires consistency and hard work yeah diligence protects against want when you're diligent you don't suffer from lack you you know and, and that's how those guys operated as against the carrying crow you know diligence enhances skill and excellence i am sure the i mean even though it's a tiny creature head thorax and abdomen you, you, you can't even detect the the the, 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 the thorax from the because the, the creature is so tiny but yet the creature is diligent and we're saying today that um if you put up put up from however small it is you put up something before you know it like the ant you could have a mountain you know because you 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 you're applying wisdom you're taking the little and you put it in a corner a little in a corner sometimes you know people want to have everything one time big yeah. and so on and sometimes that in itself because they have not developed a work ethic all of those things um you know they spend that out I had the opportunity, I'll close with this one quick. I had the opportunity to speak to the young cricketers at the Demerara Cricket Club. West Indies coach Roger Harper invited me to speak. And I shared something with them, an experience that I had. This country had a, a, a fighter. I don't, I'm not calling names, but I remember the, the a, a fight that he fought was 750,000 US dollars 20 years ago. 750,000 US dollars. And that is not, uh, that is minus all the other fights that he had built up. And so one day I was passing by the post office and I saw him by the post office. And he came to me and he asked me if I could give him a thousand dollars, looking, looking raggedy and so on. And maybe it was money to buy food. Can you imagine that? And so one has to be very mindful uh, with the resources that are given to you. And one has to be diligent. You have to, you have to build upon what you have. And don't say to people that you don't have nothing. All of us, we have something. Never mind how small it might be. We have something that we could convert into something big. That's the um, one thing I want to jump that's... on the, um, the whole notion of putting up something. I, I really like that. Uh, it's like almost like a guy in his parlance. We talk about each other. We encourage each other. You got to put up something. And I recall working in the banking industry. I I I often tell customers the the whole notion of saving, the whole notion of putting up something, it must start as a habit. So the amounts are is like a non-issue. But once you develop that habit, that cycle of saving every week, every month, every day every year the amounts will change yeah you know you you the amounts will increase but but work on that habit of putting up something for not spending everything putting up something aside and we will be amazed at how that turns into something great because for example people would say well you know when i get a million dollars i will save <laughs> you don't have that habit. When you get that million dollars, man, you get so many ideas. Savings might even be a part of those ideas. So in our getting, we must get understanding, as the wise man said. Let us use the example of the ant, of storage, of putting up. It's a key and a core value in life that helps us as we go along as we cater for the future. Um, I, I see Deacon Martin, and I want to engage him because I've heard this from a lot of young people. When I got money, I am walking. When I broke, then I can walk. But once I got money, I go to go. I have seen, I have seen instances where young men have gone into the interior and work came out loaded made solid gold chain 
and flashing. And when they are ready to return to the interior to work, they have to sell that gold chain to get a passage to go back in the interior to earn. Deacon Martin, as a young man, what is happening with our young people? Well, um, people make mistakes. And uh, I think that this is a great moment or a great time for us to encourage them to uh, change their mindset. And I think that a great idea would be for them to have a plan for their growth and development. The reason why uh, many of us uh, as young people, when you gain resources and all of that, sometimes it's, you're unfamiliar with making uh, money. So you don't know how to plan for it. You don't know how to utilize it. You don't know how to save it. Sometimes uh, if you're new to money also, um, an issue that you may have is you might want to cover your expenses. I want you to cover your expenses. You then think that everything else is for you, for you to flash around or for you to do what really uh, you really always wanted to do because you work hard for your money, you know? So it's a it's a, a interesting situation where we now have to train uh, um, the young people, how to grow their resources and how to celebrate the resources well, like celebrate the hard work that they've done, but also engage, um, help them to engage in long-term um, activities that will lead to development. And that's why, for example, at Generation Next, uh, we're doing a number of programs focusing on marketing and entrepreneurship because it's about helping them to create more value and helping them to use the resources they have to attract more resources, you know? So um, yeah, young people all across again, all across, all across the world should start to think about, well, apart from their money, what sort of resources um, do I have available to me? What, where do I want to be in five or 10 years? What am I passionate about? What do I care about? And then sit down and actually plan and write down, or maybe use ChatGPT, use the AI, Gemini, those different um, platforms and, develop those personal development plans so they'll be able to see like, yeah, I could have 50,000 or I could have 100,000 and buy a motorbike or I could have um, 100,000 and go to Kaito Falls and have a nice weekend with my friends or I could take that and invest it in a small business, um, invest it in a printer or something like that so I could print stuff on my jerseys or invest it in a competition, you know, hold a competition where you'll send tickets or, or hold a um, set up your own small food business or catering business, you know, it's just a, ch a change in mindset in order for us to um, turn people into just um, consumers, but an Intel producers. So that's my encouragement. You know, I, I, I want to add that uh, I, I like that, um, Martin, life, for some people, life just happens, you know, <laughs> and um, I remember as a young educator, there was a senior um, deputy chief education officer used to say, Young Hudson, if you train hard, you work easy. And never forget that. And in terms of some 25 years ago, I heard that train hard and your work will become easy. And so life is not, it just doesn't happen. One has to carefully strategize. You, as Martin, you mentioned, you have to have goals, objectives, and timelines. When you want, no, I'm not saying that these things work out perfectly, but it is better to have a plan than to have no plan at all. It is better to have a plan that is not working according to how it is planned than not to have no a, a plan at all. And lots of times when you look and see people, you see they're moving around aimlessly because there is no plan. You, you don't know what you want to do. You don't know what you want to become. There is no guidance, no instruction and so on. And so you really go wrong in circle and you get old and and you achieve nothing, and then you become um, you become vexed with yourself. So it's important that we have a plan. Those and they are, they always have a plan. And just to clarify, when you start making that transition from uh, spending to investing and building yourself and rolling out bit different business ideas, it's not a straight line. So don't expect that you'll you turn that money that you would have um, spent on parking or whatever immediately into millions of dollars. Is is most likely going to be a long term journey, and you'll have to stick to your plan. So don't feel bad if you lose the first hundred thousand, or if you lose because you didn't know how the different industry worked, or you didn't make the right investment. You bought a piece of equipment that you thought would have been transformational, and then the thing conked out, and you are stopped working. You know, 
these things happen. It's just about having that uh, growth mindset and transitioning from being a consumer to being a producer. So don't feel bad about it. Mistakes happen. Keep moving forward. Right, correct. Right. And and you know we must we must um capitalize on opportunities. Let me share a quick one. Um, uh, when I was studying overseas, I didn't have a a car to drive like some of the other students. Um, but every time I got a a lift to the university, I determined well. Sometimes I travel by train, um, subway. I knew the amount of money I had to pay to go back um to and from the university, but each time I got a drop to the university, and if I was fortunate, I got a drop back home, um, back to my um, accommodation, I calculated and I saved that money. I put it in my desk drawer. And um, when my family came to visit at Christmas time, I was able to take that money that I had saved, given the multiple drops that I got free, of course, and pay um, the other student. And I was able to buy the first laptop for my son. And so, I mean, it, it didn't seem as though it was an opportunity. It didn't seem as though, you know, the monies would have added up so much. But the point I'm making is that sometimes some um, some little things, God shows us, I um, may call it small windows. But if you forge ahead and utilize those opportunities, well then... <laughs> wonders um, happen in the end. So I was able to buy a laptop for him from that simple exercise. Well, we've been talking quite a lot about opportunities. We've been talking quite a lot about um, what Solomon um, spoke about the end. And um, we who have shared our experiences here, um, it's not that we have been um, superheroes, but the fact is, is that we have learned and so similarly, we, our encouragement to those of you who are listening is that not only seek opportunities, but the opportunities that come your way, utilize them and consider that life, God has blessed us with life. God has blessed each and every one of us with time and opportunity. So please utilize your time and capitalize on the opportunity and so that you can live um, not only a peaceable life, but you can live a life where, which is resourceful and you have made provision for the future. This is Choices, where we talk quite a lot about making choices and also we focus quite a lot on the opportunities that God has given to us. God bless you and we will see you again next week. We thank you for joining us on Choices today. Remember, you can join us at First Assembly, LNP Durban Street, Workmanville, Georgetown, Guyana, for any of our special services. I'm Silesia on behalf of the set reminding you that your whole life is the sum of your choices. God bless you.